if it's morning, good evening if it's evening, and good night if it's night. And a big hearty salam alaikum to each and every one of you that's listening to us now, or will be listening to us in archives. I gotta tell you, there is a lot going on. I um, noticed this story out of Hialeah, Florida um, last week, where this young African-American woman was um, denied food, or service, sorry, at a local Taco Bell. Hmm. What are my thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts on that are that I, one, have seen it happen before, and I often got a kick out of going into local supermarkets and things when I lived in Hialeah and asked for things in English. And people would get upset with me. See, it first started out because I honestly did not know how to translate the particular thing that I wanted to in Spanish. So I would ask for it in English. Sometimes being called stupid, um, outright foolish, or ignorant because I did not know the word in Spanish. But then it started to really irk me because I thought about other people, other people that were born here and, and lived here and and were brought up here. And I and I and I really felt a sense of dismay over this. Mind you, for those of you who do not know I am of um Hispanic or Latin or whatever you want to call it, descent. My parents spoke English, I mean spoke Spanish, primarily Spanish. But they both learned English and they, and they spoke. See, guys, I find it hard to believe that everywhere else in the world where you go, you can, you have to assimilate at least the language. You don't have to assimilate the culture. I don't believe in assimilating cultures. I believe you keep your culture, you keep your ways, you keep your stuff. But you have to assimilate the language. And when you go inside of places like, you know, maybe Lower Manhattan or or Miami, Florida, or certain little parts of, of the world, we get people here that choose not to learn the language. They say, fuck English. Fuck this. I don't need this. But I say you do need it if you are a part of a commercial business, or of a business. Because not everyone that walks inside that door is going to be a Spanish speaker, or Arabic speaker, or or any type of language, or wherever you may you may run up and inside these little clusters of, of neighborhoods that you see. It is a shame that this would happen to this young lady. It is a shame that it would happen to anyone. I honestly believe that the person did 
have a basic knowledge of English, because if not, she wouldn't have been the supervisor of the place. Mind you, some people, not all people, claim not to know English or not to speak a second language just so they won't have to deal with the people that they have to deal with. Guys, and if you feel that you do not want to speak the English language to someone who is patronizing your, your business or your establishment or your place of work, maybe you shouldn't be working there. Maybe you should leave the position for someone else that wants it, that really wants to help and serve people. Of course, that is only my two cents. But when I come back, I'm going to give you the whole dime. Because you know there is something I need to talk about. The lack of. The lack of urban, brown, and black people's businesses in our communities. I think it's something that needs to be talked about. Well, we'll find out when I come back.
Yes, sirree, buddy. That was so rough, so tough. My Zap and Roger. Guys, I, I, um, I said I was going to spread a whole bunch of dimes and not teas and nickels or, or pennies, actually, but I just want to give you a sobering thought. I've been, um, the other day I was looking around for, for a shop to buy certain things and I, you know, I walked into a couple of metaphysical shops and mind you, the selection was pretty good. You know, they had many of herbs, many of things, some of the herbs that weren't actually even used in, in their perspective, um, spiritualities, they, they, they were used in what I do in root work and in conjure and things of that sort. And then I started thinking back on, you know, things that I see on the internet, like this meme that I saw today that says, you know, how, how we say, oh, you know, we own our hoods, we own our neighborhoods, but, you know, there's 10 or 15 um, foreign stores inside of our neighborhoods, and none of us own those stores. So I thought to myself, I says, man, I, you know, I, I really do not like to patronize places that don't patronize me, that um, don't look at me sideways when I walk inside the store, that do not put their, you know, their better judgment aside and say, hey, man, you know, this person is wasting money here or spending money here. And, you know, I see this all the time with the nail shops and with the stores and in the things in, in the neighborhoods that I grew up in, in the neighborhoods that I that I frequent now. But I also thought to myself, I said, well, nobody's investing in here. None of us are investing in here because, you know, none of us are supporting each other. We're simply not supporting each other. Right now, if... I were to open up a shop next to in front of a block away from one of these metaphysical shops, which I happen to see a lot of people like myself walking inside of, I wondered how many people would actually go inside that shop. How many people would go spend a dollar there with me? Or maybe spend a dollar more with me there because I'm just starting out, I got a large overhead, um, I don't have the necessary connections yet to be able to bring my prices down to the next person. And I said to myself, maybe no one, because we are simply lacking loyalty. We are simply lacking camaraderie. We are simply lacking community. We're not supporting each other. So a lot of times, what I wind up doing now, I'll go through my list of friends on, on, on the internet, and I'll, you know, go to this little shop in the middle of nowhere where no one hardly even knows the person. And I will shop there for the simple fact that I know that it's hard to own a small minority business. It is hard for us to strive. We don't have the big networks. We don't have the big things. We don't have the big overhead. Or we do have the big overhead. We just don't have that type of funds to be able to bust out in this grand old matter. I often share businesses on Candelos. I mean, on this 12 o'clock somewhere. Not because of anything but that I know that we need a sense of community between ourselves. See, there's something that I might not have that Yvette the Motown Witch has. Or maybe that Joseph at Bones to Pick might have. Or maybe that our good friend Ifai Bayou may have. Or maybe the little shop in Denver called Ritual Craft. See guys, we have forgotten one main thing. That this is a billion dollar business. Yes it is, I said billion. There is a lot of money going around in this spiritual business. 
But what happens is that there are very little spiritual people in the business. Very little people from our communities in the business. And we're not helping each other out. Just because someone goes spends $10 in any vet's shop is not going to make break or make me. Just because someone goes to Ifai Bayou's and spends $20, it's not going to make or break me. Just because someone decides to go get a reading from someone else, it's not going to break or break me. See, because I know that my work is good and legitimate. I know that their work is good and legitimate. And I know that one tree does not make a forest, does not have a barrier. See, we all better stand together or we're damn sure all gonna fall apart. It's time for us to share, to communicate, and to watch each other's backs. I'll be right back. Now believe me friends, I went on Johnny Shouter Band And I saw some great performance I couldn't understand Oh lost, oh lost I went on Johnny Shouter Band And I saw some great performance friends I couldn't understand First you have to kiss one of the sister before the duck you're in the water Not to my sorrows And they never meet To join the shout of the game Let the corner Stop at all They made me fall First when you join This is what you'll do Believe me honesty, it's really true You got to kneel and kiss your teacher feet And you got to keep yourself fast for a week For they tell you that is the fashion According to the person instruction Lord, to my sorrows and they never meet To join the shout of the game Get to it, boys Every week the shouter does give a piece And the members got to come up with their rum and grease And the person going to size up in the long night gong You could see all the members gathering around He tell you that is the fashion now we going To Zion hope you bring that collection Lord, to my sorrows and pain never me To join the shouter again Get to it boys Big bam ba da Big bam ba da Big bam ba da Every week when we got to gather around And then you hear the sweet old song And the sister hold on to the balance tree And they start to singing out the top chantry And you could hear the bells start to ringing And every member in the house was shouting Lord, to my sorrows and pain Never me to join the shout of the game That was Lion Radio from the beautiful place called Trinidad and Tobago. Hope you guys are enjoying the music today because I surely am. I gotta tell you, we're doing our thing. It's only Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. But we're getting closer and closer to the Mile High Conjure Gala. And when I get there, you better believe it that I am going to be singing this song. I'll be right back.
was wrong And all the nasty things you've done So baby, dance like that for me While I sing my comeback song The lies of mine She said she'd never turn on me I got something to talk to you about, but of course I cannot find it now. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, there is definitely something going on at the end of the month, which I'm going to be a part of. Hopefully you guys will find it in your hearts to come and join us. Um, there is a little part of the event that um, we are actually sharing now, and we have been um, sharing it for a while now. We have something called um, the My How Conjure Gala, but there's a little something called the Conjure Fair. Um, I'm going to read it out to you, then you know, you can make up your mind about it, I guess. Um, it says, you can't make it to the My How Conjure Gala, come to the Mile High Conjure Fair. Shop makers of authentic witchery, wares, and genuine conjure goods. Get a reading from one of our beloved ritual craft readers or a gala presenter, all on the main level of the garden at the historic Lumber Baron Inn. Um, makers include Ritual Calf, Seven Sisters, Oak and Horn Dorn, I guess. Um, and there's a million other people, guys. Candelo's Corner, Rain's um, Conjure Shop, um, uh, 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 Miss Bev's Secret Herbs. Man, there is going to be so much things there. And the good thing about all this is, is that $15, $15 gives you access to the fair for both days. So that means $15, you can get in there for two days, walk around, meet the presenters, um, get yourself a reading, um, and buy some, some, some really cool Conjure stuff. I'm bringing some hell of a stuff from um, Texas. I know that Rain's Conjure is bringing some stuff. I know that Ambrosine Laguerre is bringing some stuff. Have you ever seen Professor Porterfield's um, um, pendulums, which happen to be some of the best pendulums I've ever seen? So, guys, do yourself a favor. If you can't make it to the Conjure Gala, come out to the Conjure Fair. It's only $15 for two days, and you get to meet all of us. Professor Ames, Professor Porterfield, Doc Beverly, um... Ifai Bayou, um, Miss Aida, Michelle Jackson. Man, we are all going to be there. Remember, the Conjure Fair at the Lumber Baron Inn and Gardens. It's going to be September 29th and the 30th. So, guys, go on ahead and check us out and do this damn thing. And while y'all doing that, I got to go get me a glass of water. For some reason, something is tearing up my throat. So, anyway, listen to this. 
and, and we'll, we'll come back, back with some stories. stories. Y'all go on ahead and up and dance. You remember this song? It's a salute but never too much. short, but we will try to bring in another one if we can. This story comes from shortspiritualstories.com. It is called Surprise Me. Hasad, Hasid, sorry, the master, was dying. He was a very extraordinary human being of being innocence and joy. He loved to laugh and dance and sing. That's the way of the Hasids. Jews don't think well of them. Well, they are untraditional. In fact, anti-traditional. But that's how real spiritual beings have always been treated by the so-called religious, by formerly religious. The real religious person is always condemned. The master had con- was condemned by them, and his ways 
were always new. He was an unco he was unconventional orthodox and unorthodox. So, as he was going to die, his disciples his disciples asked him, "What are we going to do with your body? Because you have lived such an un unconventional life that we do not know where to bury you or to burn you. What are we supposed to do?" And the dying master opened his eyes and laughed his last laughter and said, surprise me, and closed his eyes and died. This is the way of the innocent, surprise me. Even if death, there is no innocence. Laughter, even in death, there is no complaint. He was waiting to be surprised. Whether you burn him or bury him or decide to make him a surprise, don't ask for it. Don't follow giving instructions because then it would not be a surprise at all. If I say bury me or burn me, then I already know what it is you're going to do to me. It is called, this is from Osho, Osho. A guided spiritual. Well, hopefully, you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll be right back. Yeah. 
of course, that was McMadden and Fathead. I mean, oh, shit. Sorry about that. I said the name all wrong. That was McFadden and Whitehead with Ain't No Stopping Us Now. It's a damn shame because I remember singing this song in, I, in my junior high school when I was quite much younger than I am now. Man, I gotta tell you, man, I gotta thank the people that are that are that are in our chat room today. They're always inside of our chat room, um, going on with us with this crazy little thing we call it's twelve o'clock somewhere. I'm just hoping that everybody's enjoying a good lunch, or maybe is going to be enjoying a good lunch right after the show. With us, of course, we have Miss Anika. Hello there, Miss Anika. How are you, Mr. Obatala, Miss Dauma? Miss Yvette the Motown Wish, Mr. R.K. Gomez, Miss Dalma, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Wherever you may be listening to us from, I ask you that you do me a favor. It is an imperative favor. It is something that I'm asking from the depths of my heart. That you go over to the milehighconjuregala.com and you love that page. Give it some love. Give it some shares. Give it some things. You might not be able to make it this year, but someone else probably will. You're probably wondering why am I doing this? Because I really, 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 really look forward to this time of the year. This is something that we give to, we give to um, certain communities in certain places where people can't really make it out to see us. So we get together and we put our conjure caravan together and we and we take our show on the road. It is something that is done with love, with the thought of educating, entertaining, and enlightening certain people on what it is that we do. We have some of the very best workers in the United States that are gonna be here. These guys really put their hearts and souls into what they do. And remember I said that between 2018 and 2019 is going to be the year for us to teach. We can't have um, others teaching our, our people, our friends, our family, our magic. So we decided to bring this group together and, and take it out there and show people what it is that we do in a sense of community and a sense of love. I ask you to go on down to the milehighconjure.com or maybe to our faces on face uh, to our pages on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and say hello, share, like. Also, share and like. It's twelve o'clock somewhere. I know there's a ton of people hearing because we have statistics. I know we have people overseas that are listening. We have people here in the United States listening. Shit, I think we have people all over the world. So all I'm asking is, I'm not asking for your money, I'm not asking for a donation, I'm asking for a like and a share. A like and a share for this, it's 12 o'clock somewhere, and of course, for the Mary Howard Conjure Gala. You are an integral part of our community. So, do yourself a favor, do us a favor, and like and share. Remember, the Mary Howard Conjure Gala, Kimbisa.org, and of course, and of course, it's 12 o'clock somewhere. And I'm gonna switch this up a little bit because I know there's been a while since I played it and there's a lot of people that need to hear it. I'll be right back. And the news media plus a lot more. It is very relevant. In America today. Y'all go ahead and turn it up. You know you like it.
for tuning in. I want to thank the shops that are also listening in. We have several shops and several businesses that turn it up each and every day at 12 o'clock um, Eastern Standard Time and listen to this little thing we call it's 12 o'clock somewhere. Well, I want to send a quick shout out to our nice, nice, nice sponsors of the My High Conjure Gala at Ritual Craft. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, everyone is having a good time listening today and catching up on the tunes and learning a little something. I want to say hello to our friends in Conjure New Orleans. Yes, Conjure New Orleans, one of the best little conjure shops in New Orleans, Louisiana. We are having a blast there. I know that um, old Zen Moise and Mama Star tune it up every day and, and have their patrons come in and listen. So thank you for listening. I also want to thank Yvette at Yvette 
the Motown Witch.com, which has a wonderful little store in Detroit, and they're doing their thing and they're selling their wares, and they're every each and every day they also turn up and, and listen to us. I want to thank our friends at Misty's Mystical Candles, who have a great little candle shop that they make handmade, hand poured candles each and every day, and I absolutely love y'all. I also want to thank our new, well, they're not new listeners, but it's a new, a new little business called um, Goddess of Maji. They are helping people with social media and helping people optimize the very best they can in their websites and how to get the words out there. So remember, guys, if you have a a little uh, a spiritual um, a spiritual um, shop or 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 an online presence, I think maybe you should reach out to um um erica taylor and and her wonderful um staff at um goddessamaji.com okay they also have a page on facebook and all the other people that i mentioned also have pages on facebook so go ahead and check out those little businesses go ahead and check out this thing so you can optimize optimize sorry your internet base and presence it is important that you Go on ahead and check out all these places, guys. Remember that I always say that one hand washes the other and both wash the face. If you didn't listen to the beginning of the show, please do yourself a favor and listen to the beginning of the show and you find out why it is that I'm always sharing these little shops, that I'm always talking about these people, that I'm always doing the thing. If you happen to be a little small metaphysical shop, whether it's brick and mortar, whether it's an online business or something like that there, drop me a note, man, so I can talk about it here and get your name out there. We want to get your name out there. We want to get you known. We want you to strive and to be the very best you can be. Guys, you know you're listening to us 12 o'clock somewhere. I do this mostly every day, whenever I can. But I want to thank your patronage. I want to thank you all for coming in and listening to us. Tomorrow, of course, is another day. Well, as always, may all the egoons and shadows that accompany you have all the necessary light. From where I sit, that's it. Salam alaikum, everyone. Have a great and prosperous day. I want to know who motherfucking representing it here tonight. Hold on, hold on. Louisiana shit. Murder on the beat. Something for y'all to cut up to, you know? Yeah. Everybody get your motherfucking roll on. I know Shorty and she doesn't want no slow song. Had a man last year, life goes on. Haven't let the thing lose, girl, in so long. You been inside, know you like to lay low. I've been people what you bring to the table. Working hard, girl, everything paid for. First, last phone, bill, car, no cable. With your phone out, gotta hit them angles. With your phone out, snapping like you fable. And you showing no, off, but it's alright. And you showing no, off, but it's alright. It's a short life. Without a follow, without a mention You really piping up on these niggas You gotta be nice for what to these niggas I understand, you got a hundred bands You got a baby bands, you got some bad friends High school pics, you was even bad then You ain't stressing off no lover in the past tense You already had them Work at 8 a.m., finish round five Post talk down, you don't see them outside Yeah, they don't really be the same offline You know dog days, you know hard times Doing overtime for the last month Saturday, call the girls, get them gassed up Gotta hit the club, gotta make the ass jump Gotta hit the club like you hit the motherfucking angles With your phone out, snapping like you fable And you showing off, but it's alright And you showing off, but it's alright It's a short life Uh-huh Jesus uh-huh. Your boy the breakdown
it's your life. You said you died for me. Give to me, give to me. Why won't you live for me? Well, it's 12 o'clock somewhere was brought to you by Ritualcraft, Kimbisa.org, ProfessorPorterfield.com, and of course, a whole bunch of little spiritual shops everywhere. Yeah.